Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hard to believe it's uh, mid-November and we're onto our last home game and it's senior day. And, and uh, I think we have 31 maybe coming out uh, somewhere in that range uh, for the last game at the bill or potentially the last game of the bill. That's something we're going to talk about for the next few years, I think. Uh, but uh, um, a number of them, I know it's their last game and I'm excited for those guys play at home one more time in front of these great fans and great crowd. And, and uh, we're going to play a great opponent in Baylor. Baylor's a really good football team. They deserve all the accolades they're getting. Um, I think they're good in all three phases, uh, offense, defense, and teams. They're obviously really well coached. They're playing really fast and confident. And so we're going to have our hands full, um, make sure we have great plans, offense, defense, special teams. I know our guys have good confidence right now. They have great belief. Uh, now we just have to put the plan together and be able to go out and execute. But uh, last week was a, a big win over West Virginia at home, a really good West Virginia team. And so I know that helps with, with the added confidence that our guys have that uh, we're playing our best football uh, as we uh, finish the month of November. Seems like Deuce Vaughn has been able to do everything you've asked up in the season, receiver, running back, playing every single game. From your vantage point, why has he been both so durable and so versatile for you guys? Well, durability is he takes care of his body. He, he does so many things behind the scenes, um, whether it's in the training room, the strength and conditioning area, nutrition, just always making sure that he uh, does a great job with his body. And, uh, you know, just we're trying to move him around. Uh, we know that uh, sometimes he's as good a decoy as there is in, in college football. And so he's allowing other guys to be able to make plays. Uh, but we're also finding ways to get him the football. And uh, when he gets the ball in space, as we all know, he can, he can make a highlight film at any time. And he's just playing at a really confident level. Um, he understands what we're doing offensively. And uh, I appreciate the way that Mess and the offensive staff have continued to try to move him around to get him the ball. Last Baylor game against Oklahoma, what stood out to you about their defense and how they shut down those guys? Uh, they're, they're fast. They're physical. Uh, they're a veteran crew. Um, I think they're good at all three levels. Uh, they've got some really terrific defensive linemen. I really like their linebackers and, and, and their secondary is really sound as well. Uh, and you know, to do what they're doing defensively, uh, you have to be good at all three levels and they are. I know you said you're, you think you're playing the best football uh, of the season so far right now. Is it fair to say Ross Elders playing the best football of his career? Yeah, he is. Uh, he's playing with a lot of confidence. Um, I know it was an important off season for him of putting some weight and some strength on, and he did that. You know, he's 190. Uh, last year, he wasn't anywhere near that. I think he's put on 15, 18 pounds and um, playing with more confidence. Uh, we've kind of moved him around positionally. And uh, I think moving him to the weak side safety and, and putting Jerron as our quote Jack player or middle safety was a good move for both those guys. And, and uh, Ross has really uh, benefited from that. And, and I'm excited for Ross. Aaron Lewis went into the game last week instead of Will Howard. He's at four games. Is, is that a decision you're trying to make? That was what that decision was at that time. Um, you know, Will's a, a team guy and, um, if, if we need to play him, we will without question, he's taken the same amount of reps as Jaron is, but at that time, in that part of the game, uh, we didn't think it was wise to give him those snaps. Kind of working on a senior story and you had five guys that decided to come back yep. for their six seasons. I was wondering if you might be able to go through Cody, Noah, Bronson, Jaron, and Skyler, and just kind of talk about what each of those guys mean to you. <sighs> Wow, we got a long time then, you know. Uh, I, I would just, in general, for the five, I, I was so happy that uh, they entrusted us as a staff, um, they entrusted the, the 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 culture, they entrusted what what was going on here, that they wanted to finish it on a, on a high note. Um, last season didn't go uh, as well as we all wanted for a variety of reasons, and um, you know all those guys at di for different reasons came back some because they wanted to play with their, with their buddies one more time. Some because they have aspirations of playing at the next level. Um, some, they just love the game. Uh, but most importantly, they all love K state football. And so I was excited. All those guys came back. They've all had an impact. Uh, they're all great leaders. Um, and they're all guys that, um, had a profound impact on, on the turnaround that we've had this year. Ooh, maybe the first.
first guy that kind of got the ball rolling on that. Maybe the the ringleader who said, "I'm coming back." Will you guys come back with? You me? know, I, I don't know who was the first guy. I know they they all visited, obviously, um, and in their back of their mind, I maybe would think Skyler would have been the first, knowing what his situation was last year. We didn't have a conversation until uh, later in November. I know Noah um, was really interested in coming back because he just he's a guy that just loves the game of football. Um, I would say Cody was probably the last uh, that that made that decision and uh, did some time to think about it over over the whole holiday season. And I remember he and I had a conversation again. I don't can't remember it was sometime in January before the uh, second semester started. And I appreciated Cody the way he went about his process and, of, you know, uh, played a lot of football here and, you know, what, what did he see uh, his senior year to be like? And uh, so excited. All of them came back. Bohannon, what issues does he propose as a quarterback? Dual threat for sure. Uh, ability to beat you uh, running the football. Um, I think they do a great job with how they utilize him rushing the football Um you know, some design quarterback run things, probably a little bit more in the in the red zone because um, they have terrific running backs. And so they don't need to give it to him 15, 18 times a game. He's a guy that I think could do that, carry it that much if they if they needed or wanted him to. Uh, but they have such a terrific rushing uh, offense. I mean, that's that's the thing is he makes them go because of the RPO game, because his ability to throw the ball downfield. Uh, and the ability to rush the football. They, they, they are putting up big, big numbers rushing the ball. Yeah, multi-layered offenses like that. How, how difficult is that to slow down? Really hard because of um, the style of play. I mean, it's downhill right at you. Uh, you need to, you know, they're not going to, they, they have some really good bypass plays and gimmick plays, so to speak. But first and foremost, they're going to come right downhill at you and you have to be able to stop them. And to be able to stop them, you've got to, you know, try to outnumber them at the point of attack and in the box. And so when you do that, you leave a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage outside and they've got wide receivers that can take the top off that have had big plays and they've got a quarterback that can really throw the football um, with great accuracy, great arm strength. And so you know, they, they're so balanced. That's the thing I look at them offensively. They're so balanced as far as if they want to rush the football for 350 at you and not throw it, they probably could, but they're doing both right now uh, at a high level. How impressive is it what Coach Aranda has done in two seasons? Yeah, it's amazing, Dave. Uh, uh, I don't know him really real well, but uh, mainly because we've never had any Big 12 meetings. We always just do them virtually. Uh, but uh, my interaction with him last year, uh, down in Baylor, nothing but a, a tremendous amount of respect for him and class guy. Uh, admired what he did at, at LSU as a defensive guy, um, and uh, he's doesn't surprise me. He's, uh, I, I think, a guy that's probably a player's coach and and uh, um, gets a lot out of his team, and and they're playing really well right now. How impressive was it to see them kind of switch gears midstream and start going a lot of misdirection? At in the second half last week. You're talking, uh, yeah, I'm watching more cutups. I don't watch the game as it goes. Um, so it, it's, they just, they, they have so much versatility to their offense and uh, have the ability to beat you, you know, running inside, running outside, throwing the ball vertically, throwing quick game, whatever it may be. So um, as the game plays out, I, I typically don't watch it like that. What kind of progress have you seen their defense make under Ron Roberts in his second year? Um, well, they have really good personnel and they, and they play really fast. Uh, they understand their scheme. Um, they, uh, can blitz you when they want to blitz you, or they can just rush four uh, and cause some problems. You know, they've got a really good secondary. And so I, they tackle really well. I think that's the biggest thing you look at them is they run to the football, like most good defenses do, but they tackle really well. Chris, what is as impressive as a, uh, of a skill unit that you faced all year with yeah. the running backs and wide receivers. Yeah, um, without question, really good tight ends uh, as well. And and it all starts with Bohannon. I mean, he he's the guy that makes it go, and that's the that's a sign of a really good offense. Is when um, you know your quarterback uh, can scare you both rushing the football and throwing the football, and uh, that kid's playing with a lot of confidence. He's a fun player to watch. 
a lot better watching on TV probably than it is in person. Um, but uh, he uh, he's playing really well, and he makes them go. You'll miss most about coaching a guy like Skyler Thompson. Um, competitiveness and the fact that, uh, um, you know, he just – comes to work every day, wants to get better, uh, challenges his teammates to get better. I think that's the, the sign of a, a great, what we would call a servant leader. The servant leaders make everybody around them better. And um, just his presence in, in the locker room, his presence uh, on the practice field, his presence in the hotel, um, you know, he just has confidence to him. And guys feed off of that confidence. And uh, – uh, now that I get a chance to to sit in and watch some film with him, um, just he and I, or he and I and the QBs, and sit with he and Colin, it's just uh, how much he's grown from that re- from that regard as far as understanding the game of football and understanding what defenses are trying to do, the whys of things. Um, he's he's worked his tail off at it since I since I arrived here of wanting to know more and more and be a sponge. And uh, he's got a, he's got a future in this game playing. And um, when that ends, he'd have a future in this game coaching. Chris, I'm going to throw a question at you. Maybe this will surprise you, but, but neither you nor the coordinators have been asked a specific question about J-Mac the whole year. Isn't and that I guess, crazy? Does, does that speak to just that he's had kind of a very sneaky, underratedly good season because he's, he's third on your team in tackle? Yeah. Uh, J Max had a really good year. Um, when we moved in positions from strong safety to the middle safety, um, I think it kind of even sparked him a little bit, got him closer to the action. And, um, you know, he's doing some things really well in there. Um, he's still the leader uh, in the back end. Uh, he's the guy that's, that's direct in traffic. He's the guy that uh, um, is, is breaking guys down. He's a guy that's, that's challenging other people. He's made the transition for guys like Russ and Reggie, uh, really positive, you know, cause you don't, as a six year guy, you don't really have to accept that transfer. That's got one year left. Um, but he has, he's taken them in and helped them learn more about K-State football, help them learn to learn about what we do defensively and the culture of what we want to do defensively here. Um, tremendous leader and having a, having a phenomenal season. And then you guys have only missed four field goals all year, but three of them have been 26 yards in. And I know no, no thing is a guarantee, but those would be considered closer to like chip shots. So there yep. been any common theme with those misses? Yeah. Get in the end zone and score. Tell mess that get a touchdown. Um, that's the first thing. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely can. That'll fire him up. Um, I, you know, and, and, I look at Chris the last couple of weeks, he's got a cannon for a leg and sometimes he tries to guide it or just kind of punch it in rather than taking a full swing at it. It's probably like Wyatt on the golf course, you know, rather than just taking a cut at it, you want to just kind of guide it out there a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and that's what we we've kind of talked to Chris a little bit about, and um, we're going to do field goal a little bit more this week. Usually we do it a couple of days a week. We're going to add a day, um, where he's kicking with everybody there for the op time and stuff. Um, I appreciate Chris and the fact of he missed the kick and, you know, didn't, didn't let it bother him, came out and, uh, bang the next one was the next one, less pressure out maybe, but it was to get us up three scores and he put it through and, uh, this kid's got a world of ability and, uh, he's going to go through some growing pains as a, as a young, young player, but, uh, excited to be able to have him for four years. Actually, was along those lines. How important was it for him to end that game on a make? It was really important. You know, we we uh, got in a position where um, he had to kick it closer to a hash, uh, and I don't remember what the distance was, but it wasn't a forty-some yarder. It was a little bit shorter, and uh, he drilled it. And uh, he's got guys like Ty and Randon and, and Jack Bloomer around him, which I know he's in great hands because those three guys. Um, I think the world of, uh, as far as K-Staters that believe and bleed special teams at K-State of how important it is. And I can't say enough things about Randon and Ty and Jack Bloomer as far as calming him down, uh, calming Chris down and making sure uh, they support Chris. And, and that field goal was big for him. And you know, on this 
Spencer Trussell or Sincere Mason? Yeah, Sincere is going to be lost for the season with the knee injury, uh, unfortunately. And Spencer is going to be kind of a, a game time decision or week to week. His was an ankle, but we don't we we know it's not long term. So can we get him back this week? There's a chance we can. If not, he would be ready for Texas, we believe. I want to ask you about Reggie Stubblefield, just what it seems like he's kind of become an all purpose guy for you and how important it is to have some of those hybrid type. Yeah. Um, you know, we were fortunate to get to land Reg late in the recruiting process and, and brought him in as a corner. Didn't know a lot about uh, what he could do other than watching him in fall camp. We knew he brought a lot of energy. You guys can all tell that he loves to play the game, um, has a blast out there, practices as hard as he plays. Um, is a guy that uh, is very critical of him of himself and uh, um, wants to be a guy that's that's perfect on things, which I appreciate. Uh, but he's played really well for us at that kind of hybrid nickel Sam position, uh, whether it be in the run game, pass game. He's really helped us a bunch on a lot of the perimeter perimeter bubble uh, smoke game out there because he can get off blocks and make plays and. And uh, he can cover, he can tackle, he can blitz. Um, he's been an all-purpose player for us, and, and we're fortunate that uh, we have him because he can play man-to-man -man, uh, like a DB, and he can uh, play in the box like a linebacker. So he's had a great season for us. Also, Russ East had a good game last week. What's, what's he meant to you guys now? Russ is, is uh, playing with great confidence. The last month plus of the, of the season, um, He's healthy, and when he got here, I knew he was still battling some things uh, throughout the the spring and the and the summer. And then we he you know kind of learned what we were doing defensively, and uh, has really taken his game to another level. Has played really really fast, understands what we're doing, makes plays. Uh, you know, Russ is playing at an all conference level. The last game of this is just a fun group to be around right now. I'm sure that means in the locker room after the game, but does that also apply during the week when you're just out practicing? Yeah, it, it is. There's a lot of energy. Uh, there's good focus out of practice, but there's a lot of energy. Uh, there's guys that, you know, we, we keep talking to these guys, especially, you know, let's hit the fifth year seniors or six year seniors that came back. Those five guys, they could all be out in the street somewhere. Or they could all be working for somebody or, or trying to make NFL rosters, whatever it is. And instead they're here playing college football because they love the game of college football. And sometimes we get lost in, in enjoying the journey part of it and uh, uh, make no mistake. It's easier to enjoy that journey when you're having success and winning some games uh, like we have uh, the, the last four weeks. Uh, but um, I, I just enjoy being around the guys because they practice hard. They, they joke and have fun, but they know when it's time to just, you know, lock in and make sure that, uh, um, they understand the game plans and, and hold each other accountable, but uh, uh, practice is a lot of fun with these guys right now. I wanted to ask you about the two Baylor running backs. I think they're a little bit different, but what what's concerning about each? Because it seems like Ebner can do so many things, and then Abram just runs so hard. Yeah. Um, Abram's a downhill uh, runner that runs behind his pads really well doesn't go down easy on first contact can, can explode through tackles. Um, Ebner can do it all. You know, I, I, he's a great receiver out of the backfield. He can beat you downhill. He can beat you with speed. You know, they've put him in the game a couple of uh, times recently or against, I know, I think it was Iowa state together, um, which, um, you know, makes it challenging, you know, uh, because they've got two guys back there that can make plays, but uh, uh, they're, they're terrific running backs. And, and I, probably David tell you the same thing. Let's credit their offensive line. I think they've got a really, really good offensive line that understands the scheme that they're running um, and can get bodies on bodies and move people. That's it where I was going next because two of those guys are transfer guys. Is it easier for offensive linemen to come in like that under that circumstance? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. You know, we haven't had them here as, as far as the um, – the four-year transfers in the offensive line, some would tell you no because it's harder to learn a system. Others would tell you if they've played somewhere else, then, you know, it's just learning the terminology. Uh, uh, but, no, you're right. They have a couple of transfers that are playing really well for them. And, uh, you know, you watch those guys and, and they have they have experience. I know the one kid came from Buffalo uh, that's playing really well for them.
finally about senior day and handling, I guess, the emotion of it. You've been in the game a while. How, how do you, what's the message to the guys of handling it, the, the emotion of it the, the right way? Well, you, ultimately you're still playing a football game and um, I'm an emotional guy and it's hard for me with these guys that you've spent time with and you've built relationships and um, they've meant so much to the program. They've meant so much to our, our coaching staff, myself. Um, and you got to let them enjoy that time too. And then it's time to go, go play. I think the bigger thing that I've always tried to look at is if you're not going out there for senior day, boy, it's your duty. It's you got to honor these guys with your play. You got to honor these guys with your preparation throughout the week. You got to honor those guys with how much this game means to you to try to find a way to get a win for those guys, because for those guys, it's an emotional game. It's an emotional day. Shoot. I just had one last week at the Manhattan high school football game when my senior got done playing for the last time. And I've been there as, as a dad. Now I've been there as, as a player, I've been there as a coach. I don't care. That's hard for those guys. It, it is. You're emotionally spent when you know, this is your last chance on that field. After uh, playing in front of mostly empty stadiums last year, have you found a more a deeper appreciation for playing in front of fans at home this year? I never took that stuff for granted. Uh, Kellis, I, I, it's awesome. I, I love the fact that we're getting big crowds and um, it's, you know, you, you got to practice noise like we'll practice today, tomorrow and Thursday for our defense because it's so loud. You're not going to be able to talk to the guy. It's all hand signals. Um, you know, I, I watch some games on, on TV uh, when I get home and, and see the, the crowds. And, and uh, that's what college football is all about. And I, I hope um, there's great appreciation for what was what was missed last year with uh, not having fans and. Uh, I'm hopeful we're going to have a nice day on Saturday that uh, um, a bunch of K-State Nation comes out and celebrates these seniors one more time. Chris, obviously, Felix's sack total uh, has gotten a lot of attention, and rightly so. But just how impressive has it been from a coaching standpoint? I mean, forcing six fumbles yeah. you know, which leads the country. This season. Yeah. Um, what an emphasis that uh, Coach Wyatt and Coach Tui put on that, too, of, of strip sacks and, and trying to you – know, we do a circuit – um, once a week where we're either working strip sacks or strip on the ball carrier, um, Felix takes that to another level. And um, what, what an impact it has when you're able to not only get the sack, but uh, strip the football or like he did uh, on Saturday with a running back, just getting it out of there. That was a big play in the game. It got us another chance to score and took the momentum away. But, you know, to four, six fumbles uh, on top of however many sacks he has, or should have, um, you know, probably a couple more of them. Um, yeah, he's had a phenomenal season. Yeah. Seems like every week in the Big 12 season, something unexpected is happening. Is this as competitive as you recall this league? Well, I've only been in it a couple of years. Uh, but this year, I, I know that I had talked to some people about it with the amount of super seniors coming back with the amount of teams that had veteran crews and veteran groups out there. I think it's evident more now than ever, you better have your a game every week or you're going to get beat. And if you don't play up to your capabilities or you don't have great focus or you don't have great preparation, anybody can beat anybody in this league. Uh, and I, I, I marvel at what Oklahoma state's doing, to be honest with you. Um, that shows you the the crew that they probably have that are their older guys because they don't have many letdowns. And, um, you know, I, I marvel at what we've done the last four weeks. I don't care what your schedule is. If you're not ready to play, you're going to get beat. And our kids have come the last four weeks with an unbelievable mindset and great preparation and confidence to say, we're going to play our friggin' best today. Have we played our best? I don't know. We're getting there though. And it's, it's fun to watch because um, when you're playing with confidence, um, you're tough to beat. Chris, you mentioned late in the recruiting process, offensive lineman Kingsley. Who, yep. How would you categorize his advancement? Uh, really good. He missed, I think we talked about this before, missed a lot of fall camp uh, and had an injury as we just started the season. So he's been back the last, I would say month, maybe it's six weeks now, but that's, I mean, we're in the week. I don't even know what the heck week it is now. Uh, 
That's a lot. Um, he's done really well. He's down on the scout team. So he's going against Felix. He's going against Nate. He's going against boom. Uh, I really like him. I think he's going to be a really good player for us uh, next year. He's going to have to be in the mix for us next year with the amount of guys that we probably could be losing uh, that will graduate and uh, very athletic um, and uh, just needs to continue to develop and get stronger. Coach, just a single penalty on Saturday. Just yeah. Well, I thought it was our cleanest game we've played all year. You know, between the one penalty, um, the fact that we won the time of possession, we were able to run uh, the football out of big people with some 22 personnel, um, three turnovers. We didn't turn the ball over. If we don't turn the ball over, we have a chance to win every game. We were able to get three turnovers, had the punt block for a touchdown, had the kickoff return that set up a touchdown, had the interception that led to a touchdown, had the fumble recovery that led to a field goal, all those things. If you, you know, you do, you get the pick and then you go three and out, doesn't really mean anything. It was the cleanest game and we were the most opportunistic we've been all season. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great week.